Back at the Word of God today, we're going to be in a new book. But before we get started, let's ask for words of wisdom from our Heavenly Father in Yeshua Jesus Christ, the Messiah's precious, precious name. We're going to be in the book of Ecclesiastes today. Ecclesiastes in the Hebrew tongue is koalith. That's simply being put in the English. It means the preacher. And we're going to keep it simple today. And we're just going to say the preacher. So let's get into this and let's see what our Heavenly Father needs us to know. Now this uh, book was penned by Solomon. Remember in 1 Kings chapter 3 verses 5 through 14, the Lord came to Solomon in a dream and asked him what he wanted. And Solomon did not ask for honor or riches. He simply asked for wisdom. He wanted wisdom to lead, guide, direct, and to judge the people, God's children. And the Lord had looked upon that with great favor. So not only did uh, Solomon have this tremendous amount of wisdom, he also had honor and riches as well. We know that Solomon went astray in his life. He ended up having like 700 wives and uh, 300 concubines and they were of foreign nations, many of them were, bringing in their idols and their religions, and uh, Solomon did go astray. It is believed among some scholars that when Solomon returned to the Lord and repented, saw the error of his ways, he wrote this book, Ecclesiastes. Now, to understand this book, we have to know that we have two bodies. Now, documentation for this in the New Testament would be 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 44. We have a natural body that is our flesh body. It is a simply a vessel that houses, that holds our soul, the soul, our spirit, intellect of our soul. And we know, and we'll get into it in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, that as soon as our flesh body expires, we pass away, our spirit returns to the Lord. Now, what we do here on earth determines where we go. Now, I'm speaking of Lazarus uh, and the rich man. In Luke chapter 10, we know that Lazarus went to the bosom of Abraham, but and the rich man went to the bad side of the gulf. And in between them, you know, was a fixed gulf that could not be crossed. Now, we want to be where... Abraham was in the bosom of Abraham praising our Heavenly Father. So let's get into this and let's see what our Heavenly Father needs us to know. We're going to be again in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 1 and it reads, In the words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Now Solomon was the last king over the whole house of Israel. After his kingship, they separated. You had the northern tribes, 10 northern tribes in Samaria, and then in, to the south, you had the tribe of Judah and Benjamin. Verse 2, vanity of vanities, saith the preacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Now, I'm going to put this up here for you. Vanity is simply emptiness. But if you go into the prime, which is 1891, to be vain in act, word, or expectation, specifically to lead astray. So vanity, emptiness, and things of the flesh is a tool that Satan used to lead God's children astray. Verse 3, What profit hath a man of all his labor when he, which he taketh under the sun? What does he profit? Because, you know, everything that we have here materialistically, you know, when we expire, when we go back to dust, those things we cannot carry with us. The only thing we carry with us is our righteous acts. So what profit hath a man of all his labor, his weariness? Verse 4, One generation passeth away, and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. Now this generation, of course, is posterity, which means offspring. But it also is um, the revolution of time, or an age, as in earth age, now, we know that there was an age of time before now when we were with in our spiritual bodies, our true selves, we were with the Lord. But Satan fell and he took a third of God's children with him. And instead of God destroying all those children, he destroyed that age, that previous age that we were in. Now, when we come here in the flesh body, we're here to make a decision. Are we going to follow our Heavenly Father and his word, our ways of the world and Satan? Verse 5, the sun also ariseth, and the sun goeth down, and has hastes to his place where he arose. Now, think about this. We're going to be talking about several different natural cycles. This is um, talking about the sun rises in the east every day, and it sets in the west. Every day, you can count on it. It's just a cycle of how things are. 
Verse 10, 6, the wind goeth toward the south and turneth about into the north. It whirleth about continually, and the wind returneth again according to his circuits. Now, this is referring to the seasons. Now, we know that when the sun goes below the equator in the winter, uh, that gives us the season specified. But when the sun goes to the north in the summer, that brings us a new season. The seasons are defined, and, you know, you can count on them. We are going to have the, so, the four seasons. Verse 4, All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Unto the place from whence the rivers come, thither they return again. Now, this is talking about the, the water cycle, the evaporation, condensation, and precipitation that is an ongoing cycle. That is why the sea is never full. Verse 8, all things are full of labor, man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. Now, when man labors all the time, continually, and then we do have to sustain ourselves, we have to have a roof over our head, we have to have food to eat, but this is going into excessive. Many people will go and seek to buy new things, and then they'll work harder because after that newness wears off, they want more new things, and they go work harder and harder to get more new things, and then the newness wears off, and they go seeking, and it's just like a cycle continuously. Verse 9, the thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is new, no new thing under the sun, under the sun, in the flesh, the natural body. Now, this simply says what goes around comes around. The cycle over and over again. Verse 10. Is there anything that whereof it may be said, See, this is not new. It hath been already of old time, which was before us. Now, this makes me believe and think, you know, for the generation that we are in right now, as we are watching prophecy being fulfilled of the end days. You know, we are looking forward to things that are coming down. We know the Antichrist is coming. He's going to be sitting in the holy place claiming to be God. Is there any likenesses in the Old Testament that tell us, us about this? I want you to think back when when the two tribes split. I'm going to, when the 12 tribes split, of course, you had the 10 northern tribes in Samaria. Samaria means watch. It was Watch Mountain. They were supposed to be watchmen. But Jeroboam was a king over them instead of them going down to Jerusalem, which is what they were supposed to do, to worship and serve the Lord, he made two golden calves and told them they could stay there in uh, in Samaria and worship. Well, that brought in a lot of idol worship, of course, and sin and iniquity, and we know that they went and went astray from the Lord. Now, the Assyrian, which is a type of Antichrist of the Old Testament, came in and took them captive. Now, Think about Judah. Judah was taken captive by Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonian kingdom. Now, Zedekiah, the king, was told by Jeremiah in uh, Jeremiah chapter 29, if you just stay where you are, you know, build your houses, have your family, uh, plant your gardens, it's going to be okay, it's going to be 70 years. But Zedekiah went against the word of the Lord, and he went against to war against Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. We know the last thing that Zedekiah saw was his sons being murdered. They gouged his eyes out and drug him off to Babylon where he later died. Now, all he had to do was listen to the prophet Jeremiah. But he lost his all, all his sons and later his life. But we know that Jeremiah took his two daughters over to Egypt, into Spain, deeper into Europe. Now, that's another teaching for another day, but when we see these likenesses, Nebuchadnezzar, Babylonian kingdom, that is a type of Antichrist of our what we are looking forward to in the future. The Assyrian, a type of Antichrist, taking the ten northern tribes captive. Why? Now, why were they taken captive? Because of sin, idolatry, iniquity, and perversion. Nothing new under the sun. The Antichrist come, is coming, and he is going to be sitting in the holy place, claiming to be God. 
Verse 11, there is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. Now, you kind of have to go to verse 4 and get the subject matter here. Remember that generations, the posterity, uh, generations of man, men. So when you see things here, it's italicized. That just makes the English flow better. But what we're talking about is man. There is no remembrance of former men, neither shall there be any remembrance of men that are to come with those that shall come after. And, you know, we have... have had billions of people who have lived and died and gone on to be back with the Father. Now, where they are, it was determined by what they did in the flesh body. Verse 12, the, I, the preacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. Again, he's just giving us his credentials. Verse 13, and I gave my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven. This sore travail hath God given to the sons of man to be exercised therewith. Now, when you see done under heaven again, that is under the, nothing new under the sun, under the sun. So he's talking about earthly things, fleshly things. When you see this exercise, that is humbled. Verse 14, I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. This vanity, again, absolute emptiness. The vexation of spirit. Vexation is like grasping or chasing. Spirit is wind, ruach in Hebrew. So chasing of the wind. Vanity, emptiness, and chasing of the wind. Verse 15, that which is crooked cannot be made straight, and that which is wanting cannot be numbered. <laughs> the ones who are constantly out there wanting, wanting, wanting cannot be numbered. But that which is crooked cannot be made straight. This is talking about the evilness, the wickedness in the world today. We are seeing it as very profound. But a lot of people enjoy their evil works and their evil ways. What is crooked, we cannot force them to be straight. We cannot force that upon them. Verse 16, I communed with mine own heart. I meditated within my own heart, saying, Lo, I am come to great estate. And have gotten more wisdom than all they that have been before me in Jerusalem. Yea, my heart hath great experience of wisdom and knowledge. And he did. He had more wisdom than anyone who ever reigned over Israel. But what happened? He went astray. Verse 17. And I gave my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceived that this also is vexation of spirit. Now these words, madness and folly, that's your that is um, foolishness, stupidity. He says, I perceive that this also is vexation of spirit, chasing of the wind, when uh, that foolishness of the, of the flesh body, always chasing and wanting. Verse 18, for in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. This is talking about increaseth knowledge of ways of the world material things those of the flesh those who increase of wisdom of the ways of the world increases in grief and sorrow now when we read this and we know that solomon has a, an abundant amount of wisdom you know we know in proverbs chapter 1 verse 7 the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. The fear, remember, fear has a twofold meaning. Fear can mean if you're going astray from the Lord, you probably need to be in fear, but also reverence, to revere, to love the Lord. The, lo the love of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. They won't listen to the word of God. You've got many people who have in a way, created their own salvation. They won't listen to what the Word of God has to say, and you got many prognosticators out there telling them that they don't have to read and study and know what the Word of God has to say. They got that flyaway thing. That's another way of creating one's own salvation that is not biblical. Our Heavenly Father sends us His Word. He expects us to read, study, and know what He has to say. And that's going to be it for today. If you like today's teaching, like, share, and subscribe, and let's get the Word out. I hope you have a great day and join us again.